Mustard Our Honey at the Perkins Research Station. We are in the honey house with Candy Vanduska. And Candy, you're going to show us what the next step is to get that honey out of the honeycomb. Absolutely. We brought the honey here from uh, Perkins. And the first thing we've got to do is we've got to uncap it. Okay. When the honey is uh, dried sufficiently, the bees will put these uh, cappings Which over Which is like it. a wax, right? Like a wax. And so you can see where I've moved it and you can see the honey. Sometimes they don't finish capping, but they've got the moisture content perfect. Somewhere around 17% is what the bees like, and the honey doesn't spoil okay. at that percent. So in order to get the honey out, we've got to uncap it. We've first. got to uncap it. So now another thing, if you remember, we use a permacomb, which is a fully drawn plastic frame. Makes uncapping super, super easy. So I use my handy dandy little tool once. Twice. So again, this permacomb is a plastic honeycomb, if you will. So they don't have to build a whole honeycomb they, themselves. But, right. But right. you can, as a beekeeper, just buy frames that they would have to build the honeycomb up on it. Yes. And now next, I just set it in uh, the uncapping tank. It, it will set in here until I get a full load. My extractor happens to hold 18 frames. Okay. So they'll, they'll set in here until I move them over. So what is this machine doing with this the caps machine, in the meantime? This machine here is just fantastic. It's uh, the uncapper. Uh -huh. And what it does is the, un the cappings go in here with, the, with a, usually a lot of honey, and it spins and it will come out, oh. the excess honey. So we are retrieving a lot of honey that would normally just get fed back to the bees. Gotcha, okay. So, okay, so now you put them in here. What's happening in this machine? All right, this is the holding tank where the, there's some honey that will drip out of these frames while it's waiting to get a full load okay. to go in the extractor. So you got another bucket under there collecting anything that drips out? It will okay. eventually, but now for right now, most of the honey is in the bottom of okay. the tank. Okay. So, so it's very, very important to balance your extractor uh, so that it doesn't wibble and wobble and mm. walk across the floor. So Candy, what exactly is this machine? Well, this is our extractor. Some people call it a centrifuge, but it's just an extractor. And this is an 18 frame radial, meaning that it will sling the honey out of both sides of the frame at, at the same time. We don't have to stop it, turn the frames and start it again. Oh, okay. So uh, we'll start it out slow and then we'll, we'll speed it up and we let it run 10 to 15 minutes. You can take a peek to see if we can see any, any more honey being slung out of it and then we will shut it off. Okay, and I should say, it's fairly warm in your honey home, and so that kind of helps pull it helps, some of that. It helps the honey uh, come out a lot faster than it would if it's cold All right. or cooler. All so right, yeah. let's fill it up then. All right. Are you ready to bottle up some of that delicious honey? Yeah, so all we put right. all the honey in here now. The honey is in here. Okay. Uh, we did lightly filter it to get the wax particles out. Um, so now uh, we're ready to bottle. So take your bear. Okay. And you'll place it under there and pull down on the lever. And how much do these bears hold? These bears hold 24 ounces. Okay. Uh, honey is sold by actual honey weight. It is not sold by volume. And so it's actually warm, still coming out. You can fill it on. Your we hand. have uh, our bottler is water jacketed, so it heats the honey up to about 115 or so degrees, and that that makes bottling a lot faster. Yeah. Especially with fall honey that is thick. It's so. flowing pretty well. Yep. All right. So there we've got our finished bottle. Very we good. Just tap it, put the lid on, and it's ready to go find a new home. So a little bit about the color. This is a pretty dark <clears throat> honey. Can you tell that, us a little that bit? Is a, is a darker honey. The fall honeys are darker. So the okay. fall honey would be a darker honey because of the different flowers. Your spring honey is normally lighter, okay. and it would have a sweeter taste, whereas the fall honey has a more floral taste to it. Okay. Now, I think this is what most people think of when they think of honey, including the teddy bear bottle, but what about uh, spun honey? I've heard of things like that. Spun honey is a honey that has gone to sugar, but we control it, so it's real creamy and smooth. Uh, this is just a plain, and you can see just how creamy. I call it the dripless honey. Wow. 
So, so it's the honey just the same as this honey, just, just different form. Right. Nothing extra has been added. It's all pure honey, but it is a starter that we use, and those uh, sugar crystals grow at a really, really small, thin grain. All right. So. And what about some of the other products that you get out of harvesting the hives? Harvest what about the beeswax and stuff? Uh, we will take the cappings out of the capping spinner and I will melt those down and form them into blocks. I have a beeswax or I have different sizes for my different recipes. If I want to make a lotion bar, lip balm or soap, you I have put different some fragrance oils in there and right, stuff like that. Right, different oils. So, or I will sell a lot of wax to other ladies that want to make or carpenters, woodworkers, um, oh. skateboarders even. Oh, so for it's their amazing. boards and things. There's hundreds of uses for beeswax. Very nice. So Candy, this is a pretty elaborate setup and I know a lot of people are getting into beekeeping. Do they need this sort of thing to harvest the honey? You don't really need anything as elaborate as this. Uh, it certainly helps. The more hives you have, mm -hmm. the, the faster it makes it. But you can do, you can start off with crush and strain, which is messy and you waste a lot of comb. Or you could get a small hand crank extractor okay. and just use that. All right. So, yeah. And so, mm -hmm. any last advice for somebody who might be interested in getting into this or who to connect with? Well, there are different classes uh, that are taught through local beekeeping associations. I do come down to Indian Meridian Votech. They're in Stillwater, and I'll be teaching a class in February. But there's three or four um, different groups around the Oklahoma area that you can find and join. Excellent. It would be great. And, and of course they all give you good advice and they're very teamwork oriented, right? With yes, yes. They want to help everybody be successful. No pun intended. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Well here's to some success. We got some meat here. Yes, some of our homemade meat. It's wonderful. Excellent. So, Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. Mm -hmm.